Okay, so yesterday we talked about chromosomes and what they were, and then I just asked you to draw a football field kind of as a metaphor of a cell dividing. Let's see what you did. The goalposts might be like centrosomes. We'll talk more about that later. Lock you out and talk about it. See what you did. If you were in the middle, you were at the 50-yard line or the metaphyseal plate, right? Yeah. Okay, I see a lot of football fields. I'm looking. Oh. That look. Okay. You, if only you could see speed, right? Okay. I don't know where you guys went with that, but I think I interrupted you in the middle of your thought and your artistic process, but we just don't have time for that. I apologize. Um, the goalpost would be kind of like the center, central mirrors. Yeah, there's the goalpost. Oh, oh. You live in America, right? There's the, the big yellow thing, you know, at the end of the field. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's what they're called. Isn't that creepy? That's kind of weird. Are they? They ain't really a post. They're kind of like. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, the goal. That's more of a soccer term, I guess. Goal would be. But yeah. Yeah. So, you guys, today we're going to be talking about eukaryotic cell cycles and how we know that's, folks. We understand that's way more complicated than prokaryotic cell cycling, uh, so we need to focus a little bit more on it and spend a little more time talking about it. We'll talk about the four stages of nuclear division called mitosis, and we'll talk about how we divide the cytoplasm through another process called cytokinesis. We will more than likely only make it through the first four stages of mitosis today, and then we'll have to stop because that takes a fair amount of time. Whoops. So the cell cycle is a repeating sequence of cellular growth and division through the life of a cell. Cells divide, each cell grows up, then they divide, each cell grows up, each cell divides, and then they grow up, and this continues till the day you die. The life of a eukaryotic cell cycles through phases of growth, DNA replication, preparation for cell division, and the division of the nucleus, then the division of the cytoplasm, each of those containing very special elements and components. So we say it's made up of five basic phases. The first three phases together are known as interphase. Interphase contains G1, S, and G2. You guys drew those out the other day. The remaining two phases are going to be nuclear division, mitosis, and uh, cytoplasm division, cytokinesis. So this is what you guys looked at the other day. We talked about how you have the big phase of the cell's life cycle and how that's interphase. Everybody say interphase. An interphase contains a growth phase, a DNA replication or synthesis phase, and a G2 phase where you check and grow again. Why would you want to check? Because you're about to go through cell division, which involves division of the cyto I'm sorry, division of the nucleus, which is mitosis before division of the cytoplasm, which is cytokinesis. Why would you want to divide your DNA before you divide your cytoplasm? Why would you want to divide your DNA before you divide your cytoplasm? There are at least There's at least 26, 7 of you in here, so that's what I should see responding. Not 9. Keep going. If you don't know, say, I'm still thinking about that, Mr. Mason. I don't know. It's okay to write that. Five, four, three, two, one. Be 
sheep. Okay. So the DNA is evenly distributed. Yep. You got me on that one. Okay. So each cell has each cell has DNA. It's like trying you can't put the yolk in the egg after you make the egg, right? Organ okay. So if I divided the cytoplasm and then tried to divide the DNA, the DNA, all the DNA would be in one cell, right? And you wouldn't be able to get it in the other. So you have to divide the nucleus before you do the cytoplasm, okay? So you have DNA in both cells. That's the general idea. So the first part of the cell cycle is called interphase. And during interphase, the cell is not dividing. It is growing and preparing, getting ready to divide. And different types of cells spend different amounts of time in the interphase. Some never leave interphase. Cells that divide often, like skin cells, spend less time in interphase. And cells that divide seldom, like nerve cells, spend most of their time in interphase. So we cannot divide nervous tissue once you're an adult, right? We know that. You can't repair nervous tissue. Why is it a good thing that you cannot make or divide your nerve cells. Why is that a good thing? Tell me. I mean, it sounds like you, you'd want to be able to, you know, make new nervous tissue if you break your spinal, spinal cord, but why is it a good thing that you do not replicate and divide your nervous tissue, your nerves? divide my skin every day. I make new skin every day. I repair my skin all the time. No big deal. Why is it important that you're not able to go through mitosis with your nervous tissue? It's like anti-intuitive. We'd think you'd want to be able to. We think of it as a crippling thing, but if you break your back, you're screwed, right? But why is it a good thing that you do not have the ability to divide your nervous tissue? Five, four, three, two, one. More painful? No. It'd be a ball in there. You'd be real nervous, right? Yeah. That's a Mr. Mason joke. I like it. You'd be real sensitive. No, it does not turn you into. Never mind. I won't tell the joke that's in my head. Okay. Uh, no, it's, how about this? You're going to make too much of it. Okay. So here's the thing. If I were to have a new brain, like I have a new skin every day, why would <coughs> you, you'd lose everything. Like, you would have no memory. You'd be like, you'd be an idiot. Not only that, you probably wouldn't even know how to breathe or walk or talk or do anything. You'd just be there. You'd be like a vegetable in an old-time home just uh, staring at the screen. Someone have to feed you with a tube, right? So, and breathe for you. So you don't want to make new nervous tissue every day like you do skin. It's actually something that is reliant on past experiences. So you cannot and you do not want to divide nervous tissue. Muscle tissues are, are a lot, are similar in the same way. Now, interphase, during the first gap portion of interphase, that very first stage, a cell grows rapidly as the cell builds more organelles. And for most organisms, this is going to occupy the biggest part of the cell's entire life cycle, G1. So if I ask you the largest portion of interphase, you tell me G1. Why does that, why does that take up so much time? The cell's growing, making more cytoplasm, making more uh, phospholipids for its cell membrane, making more mitochondria, more chloroplasts if it's a plant cell, more lysosomes more endoplasmic reticulum, more Golgi bodies, more vesicles, everything. You name it, it's making more of them. It has to have double. And that takes the most time. Now, during the synthesis phase, the S phase portion of interphase, that's where the DNA is copied. You make an extra copy. That's where you go from your chromosomes having one chromatid to having two chromatids in each chromosome, right? Does that make sense? 
remember yesterday talking about that? That's where that sister chromatid comes from, is right here in this S phase. It needs twice the amount of information because it's going to divide. And during the second gap phase, G2, the cell continues to grow and prepares to divide, and hollow protein fibers that are called microtubules are organized in the cytoplasm during the G2 stage. We'll talk more about microtubules. If you remember cytoskeleton, there's three basic types, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate fibers, and the microtubules are the ones we're using now. So just a reminder, this G1 is the largest phase within interphase, then dividing the uh, DNA, then a final growth and checking phase, and then we go through mitosis, division of the nucleus, then cytokinesis, division of the cytoplasm, then I have two daughter cells, and then they will each go through interphase again, G1, S, G2, divide the nucleus, divide the cytoplasm, then I'll have two daughter cells again, then they go through the whole process again. I haven't asked any questions. If you're typing on your texture, you're probably texting. Maybe. So each new cell requires a complete set of organelles, including a nucleus. And the process of making a new nucleus is what is called mitosis. And that has to happen before cytokinesis, because you need to have your DNA divided before you divide your cell. And the process of separating organelles and their cytoplasm is what is called cytokinesis. Now, we are going to be walking through the process called mitosis. We talked about interphase, G1, S, G2. What happens after interphase? We go through prophase. Just a quick summary here. Prophase is where the chromosomes begin to form, meaning we start to create nucleosomes, the uh, chromatids, making our chromosomes, and then we start to see chromosomes. Then our nucleus breaks apart. We have things called centrosomes, which are sets of microtubules called centrioles, which head to two different ends of the cell, and they have these spindle fibers that act like ropes that are going to attach to our chromosomes. This is called prometaphase, although it's still part of prophase. Okay. Metaphase is where everything lines up in the middle. Anaphase is where the chromatids separate. Notice I did not say chromosomes. And intelophase is where I reform nuclei. Have I separated the cell membrane yet? No, that's a separate process called cytokinesis. This is what you're going to see in your lab. In our lab, we're going to be looking at an onion root tip. These are stages of mitosis. Look at my arrow. This stage here would be interphase. This would be interphase. This would be interphase, 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 interphase. Most cells will begin interphase. Remember, it's the largest portion of the cell's life cycle. However, if you start to see granulation, see this? This is early prophase, where the chromosomes are starting, oh, there's a good one, starting to become more visible. That's prophase. Now, if they're lined up in the middle, see that? That's metaphase, metaphase, M for middle. If they separate, it's anaphase, anaphase. If they start to reform a nucleus, I know that I'm in telophase. Are you going to be expected to do this in lab under a microscope? Yes. So during mitosis, the nucleus divides to form two nuclei, and each nucleus contains a complete set of the cell's chromosomes. The nuclear membrane breaks down briefly, and the two sister chromatids of each chromosome are pulled to the opposite sides of the dividing cell. Now, as the nucleus divides, the cytoplasm also divides. Each daughter cell receives half the original cell's organelles, and during cytokinesis, the two daughter cells are physically separated. That's the final stage. The word cytokinesis, cytokinesis cyto meaning cell, 
kinesis to move, move apart from, And although mitosis is a continuous process, biologists traditionally divide it into four stages. They are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we start off with interphase, then we go into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and finally cytokinesis. Interphase contains three different parts, G1, S, G2. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase are what are called mitosis, right? Division of the nucleus. And cytokinesis simply refers to cytokinesis. Yeah. Or ipsmatic. I don't know what that says. So this is the cell kind of life here. That's terrible. And this is where you actually have cell division. Don't worry about that. So within the nucleus, chromosomes begin to condense and become visible under the light microscope. So the very first part of prophase. Pro means what? What does pro mean? Quick, tell me. Before, right? The beginning. Yeah, I don't need to go over that. Let's get out of there. Oh, before, yes. Like the very beginning, the first thing that happens. I'm going to hear what I want to hear. <laughs> so pro means the beginning, right? It's at the beginning of. Okay, so this is what starts things. The nuclear membrane is going to break down because we're trying to divide our chromosomes at this point. And outside the nucleus, a special structure called the spindle forms. And the spindle is made up of several spindle fibers. I think of them as ropes. And each spindle fiber, in turn, is made up of an individual microtubule and a hollow tube of protein. We've talked about it's one of the cytoskeletons. And these are organized into a spindle that runs at a right angle to the cell's equator. We're going to draw this out in a minute. And cells have organelles that are called centrosomes. And these help ass assemble the spindle. And in each centrosome, there's going to be a pair of what are called centrioles. And each centriole is made up of nine triplets of microtubules, which are basically uh, short hollow fibers. And the cell centrosome is duplicated during prophase, and they go to different ends of the cell. We're going to draw that out in just a minute. So a few special things happen in prophase. But before we get started on the board, I want to make sure that you guys all have a blank piece of paper. Anybody need a blank piece of paper? Yeah, something. Well, you can use regular paper. It doesn't matter. Just you need a piece of paper, basically, because you're going to be drawing a lot of these out. I want you guys to all think of an even number between 4 and 8. What? Right, you'll be okay. So... We're going to walk through. Everybody's got paper. If you, need, if you need more, come on up. All right. You're going to need kind of four sections on your paper, so you might want to divide it into four basic sections. The first thing we need to talk about is called prophase. In a cell, there's a cell membrane. We understand that. And then in the middle of the cell membrane, we have a nucleus. Okay. Now, I talked about those microtubules forming centrioles. And remember, each centriole is a set of nine tubes and triplets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I can't draw very well. You all know that. We're going to pretend these both look very good. Okay? And those centrioles, two of them making a centrosome, head to each pole or end of the cell. 
Okay, there's two centrioles there, two here. Together they make up a centrosome. So that is a centriole. Together they make up a centrosome. Then they start to form these spindles. I'm going to give this a metaphor, by the way. I told you I wanted you to think of a number between 4 and 8. What is it? 6, right? Okay. So I kind of forced you to think of that. That is a chromosome. And we know we have pairs of chromosomes. There's a pair of chromosomes, right? Here's another pair of chromosomes. And here is another pair of chromosomes. Notice I just gave them a different color so you understand that they're pairs, right? So in each pair of chromosomes, there's going to be four chromatids. We talked about that yesterday. So I, up here, I have three pairs of chromosomes or six total chromosomes. Let's call the chromosomes pairs of cows. Like each cow is a chromatid. How many cows do you? How many pairs of cows do I have up there? Careful. I don't want to confuse you like that. Just think of them as cows. Okay, each chromatid is a cow. And let's say that they're in a corral called the nucleus. Okay, and we have these quadruplet brothers that are fighting with each other. Two of them get along, and the other two get along. And they're going to split up this ranch called a cell. Okay, cell ranch. They sell ranch at the store. By the way, I get my kid to eat broccoli. Ranch on. Truthfully, I dip mine in the ranch too. I'm not a fan of vegetables. I, I like them, but I gotta dip them in a little something, you know. I just can't just gnaw on raw broccoli. That's not right. Oh, carrots are okay. They're sweet. Yeah. Okay. So you understand the idea. We're sitting here. I told a stupid ranch joke and I went like way off. All right. So we've got our cows inside of their corral in our ranch, two brothers fighting. Each brother is a centriole in its own right. Together, we're going to say they're a group called the centrosome. What do you need to catch a cow? A, a lasso, right? You need a lasso. Okay, so our lassos are, oh, that's the wrong color. Our lasso is going to be, oh, it's cowboy day too. Our lasso is going to be, these long things called spindle fibers. Everybody say spindle fiber. Spindle fiber, right? We'll just call them spindles for short. Okay? So these cowboys get out their lassos, and they called spindle fibers, and they hook them to the middle of each chromosome. What do we call the middle of each chromosome? Everybody say central mirror. Please listen. Don't talk to your neighbor right now. Everybody say central mirror. Central mirror. Okay? That's the only place you can hook on to these cows to separate them. Well, that's where they're held together at. So that's where you got to separate them at. So since these are all quadruplets, they're going to pull equally on those spindles, right? And so if they keep pulling... Things should even out. This is prophase. At this point, what happens? Well, centri centrioles show up, centrosomes together. They head to different poles of the cell. They start to form spindles. Our chromosomes become visible because they now have spindles attached to them. We can then see them. And now, do we need to corral once we have ropes on them? What? No. So our corral can actually start to disintegrate. So the other thing that happens is the nucleus starts to break apart in prophase. Okay? Does that make sense a little bit? A tad? This is prophase. It's kind of sloppy, I know. The next phase is what is called metaphase. And in metaphase, I don't like that. Oops. Well, in metaphase, slow down, I 
I still have my centrioles, centrosomes, together, cowboys, on the different ends of the ranch or the cell. Okay? I still have my chromosomes. Except they're going to look a lot more organized. Because the cowboys are of equal strength. Okay? And they are actually going to pull equally on each centromere oops, of each pair of cows or chromatids. And what's going to happen eventually is they're going to be separated. Okay? So how many chromosomes do you see here? How many? Careful. There's 12 chromatids. How many chromosomes do you see total? Six. How many pairs of chromosomes? Three. There's three different colors, right? Three pairs of chromosomes means six chroma chromosomes total, each chromosome containing a pair of chromatids from yesterday. Remember that? Careful now. Don't mix that up. That's important. If I separate these chromatids, and they each go in their own cell, how many chromosomes will each cell have now? Still have six, won't it? So do I change my genetic number when I do that? Say no. This is how I make more skin. Do I want my skin to be the same tomorrow as it is today? Yes, I do. Okay. When I divide... These chromosomes separating the chromatids, I retain my genetic number. I don't change that. It's extremely important to understand right now. If I were making a sex cell, what would I want to do to my chromosome number, sperm and egg? What would I want to do? Cut it in half because you're half your mom and half your dad. That's called meiosis. That's chapter 11. That's a different process. Similar but different. So what I'm talking about here is keeping the, the chromosome number you've told me that is six the same in each cell. You get that? So now let's go to anaphase. These uh, spindle fibers, they start to break down. When they break down, the, the rope shortens. This is what is called anaphase. Let me go back here for a second. That's metaphase, right? Everybody say M for middle. Because everything lines up in the middle. Okay. So anaphase, say A for apart. So they're going to go apart, right? How many chromosomes are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I retained six over here and six. It's like magic, right? We get to keep the same number. So A for a part. The cowboys start to pull their ropes in. The centrioles, the centrosomes start to shorten the spindle fibers, pulling the chromatids, now their own chromosome, to different ends of the ranch because we're going to divide our cows. If this were in India, we'd say it's holy cow. Cows. They worship, they worship cows in India. Holy cow. No? <sighs> the next one is what is called... Telophase. Uh, it looks like a cell in telophase. Now,
my centrosomes will still be around, but my chromosomes, I should have the same number I started with on each side. And now, because they're on different ends of the ranch, can I put them in their new corral? So you can see the nucleus will start to reform. And the cows, because they're not getting pulled on, they can relax now. So the chromosomes actually start to relax and become chromatin again. Okay? And so they aren't as tense and they'll loosen up a little bit. They start to look like they're going to granulate again if you look under a microscope at them. Okay? Turning back into that loose genetic material. Spindle fibers will be kind of in the middle of breaking up, but they definitely will not be attached to the chromosomes anymore. Now, in the middle, I don't have a special way to remember telophase. You just got to remember this is telophase. It looks kind of like an old telephone because you got two bubbly ends. I don't know how you want to remember that. So. so, telophase is the end of the nuclear division, but is it the end of cell division? No. The end of cell division would be reforming this, and you'd actually have to show that happen, and this would be what's called cytokinesis. And at this, oops. At this stage, if you got the cytokinesis, this would just look granulated. It wouldn't look like chromosomes anymore. Okay? Doing all right? Okay. So let's go back. Prophase. Chromosomes become visible. Listen carefully. I'm not, I'm not wasting my breath here. Chromosomes become visible. Nucleus starts to break up. Spindle fibers form. Centrosomes form. Two centrioles to each centrosome and head to two different poles of the cell. They attach each spindle to the centromere of each of the chromosomes. They start to pull. Pro phase beginning. Pro. Metaphase. M for middle. Both sides pull so hard on the chromosomes that they line up in the middle. It's called metaphase. Each spindle fiber is still attached to a centromere. We still have all of our six chromosomes right now in the middle. Spindle fibers begin to shorten. The centrosomes break down the spindle fibers and pull them in. A for apart. Finally, they separate as these continue to shorten. The chromatids separate, right? That's an important distinction. Now becoming their own chromosome, retaining the number six in each cell. This continues to happen until they reach two different ends, ending on telophase. Each side still having six chromosomes. Spindle fibers break down. New nuclei. This is the end of mitosis. We still need to go through cytokinesis by dividing the cell membrane completely. All right. What questions do you have?